Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm continuing work on the restoration of this quarter scale Mick Reeves Fournier RF4. I got in touch with Mick Reeves models to ask them some questions about the plans and the parts for this kit and fortunately for me they have stock of the canopy, the fiberglass cowl and a retractable nose gear. While I was showing them some photos they pointed out that this model is actually missing the wing spoilers. They should be about 300mm or 12 inches long and sit around this area of the wing. So that's going to be the focus of today's video. I'm planning to combine some new and old techniques to make these spoilers, including CAD modelling and 3D printing. Interestingly, it looks like this Fornia may have actually had spoilers at some point in its life. There's slots in the ribs, presumably standard in the kit form, a reinforced section of wing skin, and a patch on the outer surface of the wing. At the root, there's the remains of a 6mm dowel that would have actuated the spoiler. I'm going to start by removing the wing skin in the area I think the spoiler should go. I was kindly sent some reference photos by a viewer named Seamus who watched the first video on this project. And this looks like the same spot as on his model, so thanks for your help Seamus. Okay, so this is the spoiler design I've come up with so far. Um, I'm using Autodesk Fusion 360, um, which I believe is three for personal use. Um, can download and run on Windows and Mac. Um, but this is uh, relatively new to me. Um, I've probably been using Fusion for about a year, um, on and off on small, designing small parts like this uh, for 3D printing and to just visualize some ideas. Um, so this spoiler is 300 millimeters long uh, to fit the, the specifications that Mick Reeves models have said it should be. Um, I've made it currently about 40, 45 millimeters deep, um, trying to take into account the fact that when it pivots uh, on this pivot point here, it actually drops down because the, the pivot is below the surface. Um, so I need to take that into account and adjust the length accordingly. These measurements are other than a 300 millimeter length um, are just guesstimates at this point um, and I will refine them as I go. Um, so as I say it's 300 millimeters long, uh, it's two millimeters thick on this diagram uh, here and it is currently two solid components. The main spoiler with uh, the dowel built in um, this will be 3D printed, uh, and then the control horn, which will uh, slide in and out um, and can be glued, uh, will be printed separately, sorry, and then will be glued in place in a slot that is cut out here. These blocks represent the end ribs um, at the end, either end of the 300 millimeter gap. Um, what I haven't taken into account is the fact that there are more ribs in between. Um, that's not too much of a problem because I will need to, I can notch those out um, to enable this block, uh, to, which gives it kind of uh, gives the part strength um, and is the axis of rotation, um, that will need some clearance in those ribs. That's not too much of a problem. That can be notched out nicely, and the rest of the ribs supported to make up for it. In this clip, I'm just splitting the spoiler in two so that I can print it on my smaller build base of the Ender 3 Pro. I'm also adding a dowel and a tongue to one end of the part so that it can key the two halves together. So this is the first version of my wing spoiler. Um, as you can hear, probably the 3D printer's working on version two now. Um, but I just wanted to talk about a couple of uh, changes I'm going to make in order to get this to work. Um, so as you can see, uh, the two parts have been joined together here. Um, and I've whacked a load of super glue on there and tried to get them straight, uh, but I've failed. Um, the notch, uh, the dowel and the, and the tongue uh, didn't really work. The pr printing at that sort of one millimeter uh, depth didn't really work out for me. So I'm gonna cut those out off the next version and just have a flat mating surface that I can put some epoxy on. Um, I've increased the depth up to 30 millimeters. Um, and as you can see, this fits quite nicely in, uh, in the gap. Uh, 300 millimeters between the ribs has worked out very nicely. Um, and the little bearing blocks or pivot points that I've made 
um, fit on. I had to enlarge those slightly from the five millimeters as the tolerance was just too tight. Uh, the idea being that those blocks will glue onto the inside of the ribs um, and sit like this and then the servo will pull on the control horn and rotate that within the blocks. Um, the reason I've had to, you can see the reason I had to enlarge it here, um, that's just too little surface area I think. 30mm um, will give me probably twice the, the height again on top of the wing. Um, I need to consider the pivot point and the clearance for that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is get a final version together and sorted and uh, temporarily fix it in so I can work out um, if I need to enlarge this gap uh, in the leading edge of the spoiler or whether um, it will work as is and I can either use some balsa or some covering film to, to make a bit of a cover for the gap if needed. So I've just um, mocked that in place using a couple of these uh, these really useful clamps there, um, and uh, I think it's going to work quite well. Um, effectively, the rotation goes like that. There's a little clearance issue um, with the ribs that's just pushing it up slightly. Uh, this gap here, I'm not worried about. I can use a nice lap of film, covering film, to cover that. Um, obviously, the the airflow is this way, um, so it's going to stay down. Uh, during flight and when that rotates up it will just push the film up to create a nice seal there and just improve the efficiency. Obviously the whole spoiler will be covered in covering film. Um, I'm yet to test how well it sticks to PLA plastic but we will try that out uh, before committing. Um, but uh, that should work out quite nicely. I need to just uh, lower remove a bit of material from the, the ribs uh, so the rotation of the the dowel here um, can move freely um, but I think that is a good start. So I've just redesigned the control horn um, and I'm going, I've position, placed it so that it will position over the join and offer some strength there when it's glued in place. Um, there's a little bit of uh, support material here because there's an overhang on it uh, so I'm just going to remove that, hopefully without breaking the control horn. There we go. And this should, in theory, fit here. Um, and it looks like it will. I just need to remove some of the glue that has uh, built up there from my previous gluing. So I've obviously got a dimension wrong here because there's a sizable gap between the control horn and the surface of the spoiler um, so I'm obviously going to have to redesign and reprint that um, but it looks like it's about a millimeter so maybe I made the base of it too thick um, yeah so it's about a millimeter uh, or one and a half actually about one and a half millimeters so quite a bit more than I would have intentionally designed in there um, so that's obviously a mistake on my part but I can reprint that that takes about uh, eight to nine minutes to print um, so if it works I'm more than happy to refine it and print different versions ideally I'd like to not have to reprint this one um, so we'll see how it gets on um, and if I can make it work this is the revised control horn, all printed out. Um, I've just cleaned it up and sanded it down a little bit to remove the excess uh, print material. Um, and that seems to fit nicely uh, now. I also increased the depth, uh, the surface area for the contact point there to reinforce that joint but also give it some more uh, strength when it's being pushed on. So I'm going to epoxy that in place um, and then mock up uh, another, another go. The control arm's glued in place um, and I've clamped the spoiler back into position. Um, I'm starting to get concerned about how I'm going to actuate it with the servo. Um, I've got a varying size and strength servos here. Uh, the smallest I've got is this Emacs um, 
servo that at six volts uh, has 1.8 kilograms torque per centimeter. Um, that will fit in there um, with an incredibly short push rod. Um, so two will fit in there. This Hobby King servo. Uh, this is a Metal Gear one. Will probably stand up a little bit better than the Emacs one. Uh, again, it's about 1.5, 1.8 kilos of torque. Um, but I'm struggling to find a way to fit them in, uh, have enough clearances to get everything to work. So I've rigged up the spoiler using uh, an E-Flight servo from an F, uh, from a Yak 54. Um, and I've kind of jury-rigged this in place. I have to hold the servo in position while uh, while trying to show you. But this should work. Um, it's It seems to be working quite well. Um, there's plenty of torque in that servo. Um, but I just can't hold it in place to get a, a repeatable movement. Um, so... Um, that should work out very nicely. It just clears everything I need. Um, so I'm going to try and get all this fully mounted um, and uh, into the into the wing. The servo has to tuck right into the to the D box at the front here in order to make everything fit and get the right angle. Um, it's going to be quite a semi-permanent mounting solution in order to get this to work uh, properly. Um, removal of it in the future would probably require cutting into uh, the top surface of the wing, but it's all repairable um, if that's the case. I'd rather have a way I could remove it, but there's just not enough space. Um, so I'll do my best to make a removable tray, but I think it's gonna end up being um, also glued in place uh, and potentially uh, the servo glued into that because I just can't access the screws. Um, so we'll see what we do. So the spoiler mounts are epoxied in. Um, and the spoiler is moving freely. I used a drop of three in one oil uh, on each of the pivots to make sure the epoxy didn't stick to those. Um, and that's moving very, very nicely now, nice and smooth. Um, and I've also just constructed a little plinth uh, out of some balsa um, to support the servo. Um, I can't access the back side of it, uh, and there's no way to access screws once I put them in. So that is um, just epoxied on, and that is curing now. Um, with five minute epoxy, and as you can see, plenty of throw there to operate the servo, uh, to operate the spoiler. Um, so while that is drying and setting, I'm going to reinforce uh, these ribs. Obviously, where there was a slot before um, for the spoiler, I've obviously removed more material uh, from each of these centre three ribs here. So I'm going to reinforce those with just some stock balsa, um, cut some. Got some lengths to go uh, across the, the, the ribs like that. That's all reinforced um, and the glue has cured. Epoxy is cured. Um, and this is uh, a small issue. So uh, I think the geometry for the control horn is wrong. Um, so when it is fully closed, what's happening is it's bending um, rather than rotating. When it's slightly open, it's not a problem, the geometry seems right, uh, but when it, when it is that, uh, if I trim it back so that the spoiler is fully flat, um, it's jamming and obviously flexing rather than bringing it out. If I open it slightly beforehand, it works fine. Um, what I'm going to try and do is use a lower lower hole on the uh, on the servo arm um, and try and move that from a kind of change the geometry, change the angle of that um, force there. So uh, that should only take a couple of moments. So I'll do that now. That's got it. There we go. Once I set the uh, Travel the end points should remove. I mean, that's full throw there, uh, which I'm very happy with actually. That's probably more than enough. Um, what I'd like to do, I'll set the set up the end points um, and adjust it for a slow opening, um, and that uh, will probably be a nice job done. 
Okay, here we go then, moment of truth. Very slight um, non-return issue. It's just stopping just before, but it's not actually uh, the limit of the servo. There's just a bit of slop in the um, in the mechanism because of the geometry, um, and the, the push rod seems to get stuck. Um, but actually, it's a very small amount of pressure to get that back in. So I think that will be fine. I'd like to sort it, and I'll play around with a few bits, but. Wind resistance and airflow is going to push that down, I'm sure of it. And if it doesn't, then, well, it's not going to be the end of the world, is it? Um, really pleased with that. That's a nice little mechanism. Um, a bit rough around the edges, uh, but I think it's uh, it's going to be good. Um, I was able to retain the push rod uh, bell crank mechanism for the ailerons, which I like. Um, I've only removed a very small amount of the original material, um, and I've built in a feature uh, that the scale mod uh, the, the full size has and the scale model kits should have so I was in the process of routing the server wires through uh, the ribs um, and then I realized that actually we've still got the dowel stuck in uh, from the original spoilers now this rotates freely there but what it doesn't do uh, is slide in and out I can't pull it out from here um, there is this patch here that's obviously been cut into it previously um, for either servo positioning or um, working with this mechanism so what I'm going to try and do um, is cut into that now and see what's in there. I doubt there's a servo in there. Um, there's a little hole here and I can't see anything inside there, um, but I'm gonna cut in and see what we've got. Okay, so as you can see, there's nothing in there other than uh, just a bit of uh, sleeving around that dowel to hold it in place. Um, I'm going to try and remove that and uh, and pull the dowel out. So the little bit of rubber tube uh, was just very loosely held on with some glue um, and it actually came off very very easily so that dowel will now slip out nicely freeing up the hole for my servo cables um, and I can fish out the piece of tubing with some long nose pliers um, and actually have done relatively minimal damage um, to the skin, uh, which I can I can repair quite easily either with this piece or with a, another piece of balsa. Well, thank you so much for watching. That's it for this episode. Really pleased with how the spoilers turned out. Definitely some refinements that I can make for the other side, but fundamentally the mechanism works um, and the process itself works. Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.